Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man Jerry. Today we're going to be talking about Corvettes. Um, I've noticed that the Corvettes have kind of leveled out. This is the fourth generation. And I think dealers, what's happening is dealers are noticing this markup uh, is not going to work. Um, even the dealer where I purchased my car from, they still try to do that markup thing. But I think if you just tell them no, um, they'll, they'll, you just got to be a great negotiator. Someone's selling you or you're selling them. Uh, one of the two. I have yet to pay markup on any vehicle that I've purchased. I've even gotten discounts. Um, but uh, I think the the I'm looking at at the Corvettes now, and what's it's moving from vehicle to vehicle. Uh, dealers are saying that E-Ray is uh, something that's going to be high demand, uh, like the, you know the, the trend where you start creating conversation and you start making it, people believe that it's true. In reality, you know these dealers are privately owned, so they can sell these cars for whatever they want to sell them for. So you just have to be smart when it's time to buy your car, especially if you're buying a car that's very expensive and you technically don't really need it and it's a want and we know that this is for fun. Uh, yeah, you really want to get the best price, uh, which is sticker or less. Uh, and when I saw the Corvettes recently, uh, I've been noticing the Corvettes have just kind of leveled. I haven't been seeing any markup on the Corvettes, at least in my searching, uh, for the 2024 models. Uh, and the 2023 models, they definitely have not, haven't seen anybody saying that they've paid markup. Uh, but some dealers are still trying to do this with the orders of, now they're doing this with the orders of the new Camaro, the um, the Panther. They're marking that car up $50,000, $20,000, $75,000, which is just, it's just going to happen. They're going to try it. Either you fall for it or you don't. Simply put, at this point in the game, if you're paying markup for a vehicle, you're just throwing money out the window like you did, like some others did before, and you're you're falling for this scam of, it's a demand. So I did see a couple of Panthers coming in and they're all sold units, but the people paid 50,000 over. Like who does that? This car costs, they built it out at about 92 to 97,000. And you're going to give the dealer an extra 50,000 just because I still can't wrap my head around this. It is just not smart period. And so now you look at the Corvettes, the 24 Corvettes, I'm seeing a lot of stingrays on the lot, all different models, 1LT, uh, 2LT, 3LT. I'm seeing them all there. And I think consumers uh, are finally saying to themselves, screw that, I'm not I'm not doing that. Now, the Corvette Stingray uh, obviously is a popular one. I've seen some Z06s. I did have a, a dealer call me and say, hey, you know, we're, we've gone down $50,000. I'm like, yeah, but you're still way over <laughs> You're you're still thirty thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars over the sticker price. I'm not paying you thirty thousand dollars over the price or whatever. It's, it's not going to happen. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, it, it, on some vehicles, I think the E-Ray is going to be just like the Z06 when it first came out. They were just marking them up like crazy. And I just, I, I do kind of feel feel <laughs> these. I think if you paid a hundred thousand over for a Z06 or you paid. fifty thousand over, if you paid anything over, reasonable to me. Like if I just if I just had to do it, which I won't do it, but if I just had to do it, I wouldn't want to go over like two thousand dollars or something like that, maybe a thousand. I just wouldn't want to do it because it's like no incentive. And and I would tell them, you're gonna have to give me something, like you have to put on some tent, you know, do something. Uh, I just I just can't just throw money out the window like that. It's just not smart. So the Corvettes now are sitting on the lot. I haven't been to a Chevy deal in a, in a long time. Uh, once I sold my Corvette. I start trying to move forward to see because I am on the list for the E-Ray and yeah, they're selling it at MSRP. Uh, but you know, I'm starting to question whether I even want to spend <laughs> this $107,000 on the E-Ray. Do I really want to do that? Like, I mean, I've, I'm, I've reality is setting. I'm, I'm thinking like, do I, do I really want to, do I really want to spend $107,000 before taxes on a vehicle? I don't know that I do. Uh, but we don't we don't know you know the excitement I, I don't have the car yet so <laughs> I, I don't it's not it's not available he hasn't called me and said hey you're you're up let me get your order in that hasn't happened so um, yeah we, we're we're not there yet but you know the stingrays I've definitely moved on from the stingrays uh, having the stingray it was nice but it seems like if uh, for me I got it, it, not just me most people you start to want more when you have a lot. And that's just how it is with certain things and with cars. That's why you see people supercharging their cars or, you know, adding an exhaust and, you know, changing up the factory product. Because they just got to, they, they got to have that little bit more. 
and it's fun to do. Why not? Just tear it apart and do it your way. So the Corvettes now sitting on the lot. I, I can go to a lot and see maybe five or six, seven, eight, nine of them sitting on the lot with no problem. And, and they're all look like they're all at MSRP. Now they're, they're specced a little bit, but still they're at MSRP. There was a whole bunch of them sitting in like the dealer where I bought mine from. They had a bunch of just like different color. Uh, and I showed you in that car show, they had a bunch of 24s out there with no options sitting at $70,000 because that was the MSRP just in a bunch of different colors. And I, I was like, wow, you know, okay. You know, it, 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 it costs more, but still they're not adding any options to it. But at the same time, you're getting way more options for that $2,000 increase that they did. So I'm, I'm curious. I haven't, also, I have not seen a lot of 2024 deliveries. I haven't seen people posting online, took delivery of my 2024 Cor Corvette, excuse me. I, have, I haven't seen that yet. I've seen one or two people and I, I haven't really been searching for other people's deliveries, but um, I, I, you know, just typing in 2024 Corvette online, you don't see very many people buying them. The price increase, and then I'm sure there's a delay for some dealers' allocations. Like every dealer can't get in allocations. This is obviously true, but the dealers who have the allocations, they're not really moving these units quick as they did before. I mean, I just, dang, I, <laughs> I have compassion for the people who paid over uh msrp at twenty thousand thirty thousand you bought yourself into debt because and then you financed it too probably and so that is just one of the worst decisions to, it's just no. <laughs> I, I mean i can't i man yeah mm -mm, no way so you know the 24 models Look the same with a lot more features and functionality than the uh, safety features and standard features did the 23 models. Um, I thought I would, I thought I would miss my Corvette once I sold it, but I actually don't. Um, which is why a part of me feels like when my allocation comes up for the E-Ray, I probably won't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't think I'll be too quick to say, Hey, all right, I'm, I'm ready to get it because that's going to be six months to a year and tons of other cars are going to be out. Like, I'm definitely intrigued with the 24 Mustang. That thing, wow. I mean, it's incredible, folks. It's I've I've never purchased a a Ford Mustang before. Again, I said it in the other video I put out on Mustang. They let me take one home. You know, I was like, whoa, this thing, and it's a manual too. Uh wow. The, you know, and you know, oh the manuals are slower. I'm not buying a car to race everybody it's just not happening it's it's more of an experience to say it's a driver's car it's you're rolling your own gears it's ah oh man and all this conversation about the v8 is dead and the muscle car is dead folks that is just marketing that that's all it is they're just going to give it to you in another way they're just trying to lead you into this this new conversation uh of what you think you need or want now for a muscle car you don't have to buy any of these new electric vehicles coming out um these electric muscle cars supposedly is coming. I think they're going to be more like hybrids. I don't think they're going to go fully electric on there. They can demo this 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 new Charger EV, but it'll be some time before that comes out. They just I don't I don't believe that they're just going to do it. If they do it, hey, respect. I just don't believe that it's going to happen because the the muscle car conversation is great, but it's not going to be able to compete with the Tesla. It's just not. Tesla has the infrastructure on lock. And it has the um, power down, the plaid, and then they have the track pack with the plaid now. The plaid is eighty nine thousand, folks. That's a phenomenal deal if you just want to go fast, and you don't pay for gas. You can charge up, go to the track, and go home. Beat everybody, and pretty much, <laughs> I mean, beat ninety nine percent of the people at the track, and then go home. And you got a regular family sedan. Not too many gas vehicles can do that. So you, you, they have to be highly modified or they cost a lot. That That's the difference. I was looking at some cars uh, from like Mercedes and all these different dealers or brands that have their zero to 60 times and their performance. They, they cost nearly twice as much. You go to Mercedes website and start looking at some of the cars they have for performance. Oh, you get that V8, you get that beautiful style, you know, this stuff. But they're like $200,000 and they still can't be the plaid in a straight line. And then the track pack... You know, for a hundred thousand, you can get a, a track pack 
uh, plaid and you, you're beating up on everybody on the road, just no getting around it, unless it's a supercar or something like that. Because there are cars that are faster than the, than the plaid, uh, but they, they cost millions of dollars. They're, we're, they cost millions of dollars. So the, the Tesla infrastructure and the cars that they offer beat nearly everything on the road. You've got performance Model 3s beating Hellcats, Scat Packs, just everything on the road. It's just the way it goes. So looking at the, the Mustang, you know, the Dark Horse and, and these, I wouldn't buy a Dark Horse. Um, I'm not that kind of shopper. Like, I don't, I wouldn't want to buy into, and furthermore, the Dark Horse is getting marked up by some dealers. Like, some dealers, like, if I order, if I order a car, I get it my way. Uh, yeah, I, I would tell the dealer, if you're trying to do markup, we, we don't have to place this order. But a lot of the dealers are not marking up. They're only trying to mark up the G, the uh, Dark Horse that's sitting on their lot. But if you order a Dark Horse, I don't believe a lot of the dealers will mark it up. I think your people are getting them at MSRP. And, you know, other OEMs should take note from Ford, man. They really should. Uh, because, uh, f furthermore, the Ford has <laughs> just the best-sounding exhaust of all the Challenger, Camaro. It just... The four just sounds better. And then the changing of the gears when you change on that six speed. Oof. Now the Dark Horse has a Tremec, um, not the MT82, I think it is, and the GTs and all those. But, you know, I, I, I drove the GT, dr haven't driven the, the, the Dark Horse, but the Dark Horse isn't, uh, you know, ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 better than when it's just, I was having a conversation with someone about the transmission. He just harping on the transmission, harping on the transmission. But you can add a performance pack to the GT and you know yeah you you at some point you should just go to the dark horse the dark horse is like 59,000 to start that's a, a phenomenal freaking deal that is a beautiful deal the dark horse starting at 59 and then if you just pick a color and don't add any options you got a phenomenal car you don't have to do the track pack because uh, if you're not going to the track then don't do the track pack <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always big on that don't buy all these performance parts if you're not going to go you know from the dealer that is at least because a lot of things you can do aftermarket now but sometimes it is good to to get uh some of the options from the dealer if you're really going to use them you know because they they it's not it's not a bad deal for five thousand dollars on the track pack with all the upgrades that you get um versus you doing it by yourself it's, it's a better deal to do it to the dealer because it's all warranted and stuff like that and then you get your track insurance and then you're really covered uh but the dark horse at fifty nine thousand. That's a gimme. I think that's a, a really good deal. Yeah, it's not the quickest car on the road, um, but it's, again, it's that that driver's experience. Driving a manual Camaro is cool, but again, I said it before. The dash on I would love to see the dash of the Corvette shuffle over to the Camaro because Chevy is our GM has already moved up their Colorados. You know their their GMC, all those lower end trucks have a beautiful dash in them. So the Camaro should have, the Panther, that 24 Panther and the 24 Camaros should have at least gotten that upgrade around the dash. And I bet they they would, because the infotainment center on the Camaros are horrible. It's like the, the Dodge infotainment center. It's not horrible, but it's dated. The infotainment center on the on the Camaros is extremely dated and, and they really need to do something about that. So when you look at the Ford Mustang S650, these current models have a beautiful up infotainment center upgrade. Now, everything is in the dash, like your AC and your controls and everything. That I'm not too much of a fan of, but I'm used to it because I have a Tesla. So it's not something that's going to be a hard sell for me. You know, I genuinely really like the Mustang. And I think that's that's definitely a car that I'm considering, that I've considered uh, ever since driving it. And then the fact that they let me just take one, I was like... I, the, I, man, I had a blast. I didn't rip on it a lot. I just kind of drove it how I would naturally drive it. It has rev matching. And, you know, Chevy uses the paddle shifters to enable rev matching. But in the Ford, you can just go in and boop, hit a button. Or you can program it on your favorites button and just keep it in and uh, rev matching. Sometimes you want to roll your own gears. You want to really be in control of the car. But the rev matching, definitely. If you're going to daily drive it, I would probably daily drive this car for quite some time. Because there are other cars that I'm interested in. Uh, from Tesla that I'm just waiting on. The Highland should be coming soon, and there's going to be a performance version of the Model 3 next, coming soon as well. So I'm genuinely excited about this, and that will replace my current Tesla. If I don't get a performance model of the Model 3 and the 2024 model, you know, I'd probably have to just get a, um, 
I'd have to get a Model S. I don't know that I even need the plaid. Like, what do I need the plaid for? It's nice. It's fast. Do I really need it? No, I really don't. Uh, I, I don't go to the track. And then I've, I've actually, Tesla actually gave me a Model S before and said, hey, you know, you should take this home. You should check it out. And uh, I think you'll probably really like it. And they were right. That 0 to 60 time is 3.1 seconds. And a lot of people um, go faster than 0 to 60 with the, with the long range version of the Model S. They go to 2.9, a lot of people said, or under 3. But after that, like, what do I need all that for on the road? I'm not going to the track. So it's just a matter of, for me, going with the Model S will be just range. Depending on how much range, I'm willing to wait too, man. I am I'm, I'm super patient when it comes to certain things. I'm willing to just ugh, just stick it out. Just it's hard, but I'm willing. To, I'm ready to stick it out and wait. If the Highland comes in the next in the first quarter, uh, I, I'm I'm gonna order. I'm 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 gonna order, especially if there's if they announce a performance version. I'm going to order. It won't be faster than the Plaid, uh, and you know, but it, and it won't be faster than the Model S more than likely. But they can get it to, well, they might. Yeah, it might be faster than the Model S. If they can get it to 3 seconds or 2.9 or something like that on record, then yeah, it'll be a, probably a better deal to buy if you want the smaller vehicle. Um, but, you know, hey, who knows? I'm willing to stick it out, though, and, and wait on a, a performance model of the 3. It's got the, it's got the, a, lot of, a lot of the upgrades, and it's taken away a lot of things from the uh, current Model S and, and Plaid. No stocks for signals or anything like that. The Highland is everywhere, just not in the U.S. Um, and I've spoke to I've spoken to Tesla about this, and they're just like, "Oh, it's coming, it's coming." I'm like, "Ugh, what are you guys doing?" Uh, but nonetheless, that that is where I'm consider. I'm getting another performance. I'm getting a performance Tesla this time, whether it be a performance Y, three, or S. Uh, something's going to replace the blue Tesla. Red Tesla will probably be here forever. She loves it, uh, but the blue one, which is one I drive. Uh, something's replacing that that vehicle for sure, and we, we're gonna. It, I'm going performance all the way. But when it comes to my muscle car, man, I just feel like the Stingray is cool and everything. But did it? Uh, I don't know. I'm just. I'm kind of over it, I guess. Uh, and and I only, I only would want the E-Ray, or possibly a Z06, but you know, E-Ray for the electrified version. Uh, and then other than that, man, I think the Mustang is probably the best option for a muscle car right now. The Ford Mustang GT is is great. And I've driven a lot of cars and owned a lot of cars. And the, the Ford Mustang GT is it's inevitable, man. It, that car, they off, they're offering a six. And they already have a short shifter from Steeda. You can, you can change out that current uh, shifter in there and get a short shifter. And wow, you've got a heck of a car. Just buying the GT is enough. The dark horse is cool, but you can get a GT with a track package. But once you start to get to 59,000, folks, you might just go to a dark horse. Just get a plain old dark horse and you'll be fine. But I definitely would want a a Mustang in a six-speed. Oof. It, it just, it was so much fun. I've driven two of them now since <laughs> since the last, since I last shot a video for you. And um, uh, one of them was my favorite color, that deep red color. And, you know, it's just one of my favorite colors. On a car, that deep red is really nice. Uh, but it, pretty much the same color as my Corvette. It's pretty much what it was. I mean, just having that six-speed manual, oof, folks, it's it's incredible. It, it's, and the exhaust, like, I wouldn't tell a person to get... Now, the stock exhaust on the Stingray was really nice. Uh, the performance exhaust on the Stingray, it was really good. It was really good. It added power, too. But the Mustang exhaust, the stock exhaust on the Mustang GT, current the 24 Mustang, it sounds better than the Stingray performance exhaust. It's incredible. But the performance exhaust on the Mustang GT or 24 man, let me tell you something. Spend that 1,200 bucks, folks. I've, I've, I think I said it in another video. I've, so many people who don't get that performance exhaust, man, it's totally worth it. It's worth getting it directly from them. Because Ford actually knows how to really tune their exhaust. It, it, that thing is just incredible. You could have it in sport mode or normal mode, and it just sounds amazing. So, do you have a 24 Stingray? And are you have you ever considered buying a 24 Mustang? Oof, that thing is incredible. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point with my allocation for my E-Ray. 
when I come up on the list, I'll make a decision. But as of now, it really sounds like I'm convinced and <laughs> I've convinced myself, no sales pitch from any salespeople, that Mustang is a hit. That, just that manual alone, oh, I miss driving a manual. Uh, but man, that that is gonna be a lot of fun. We shall see. It's your man Jay, hope you guys enjoyed. New Tesla and new muscle car coming. Stay locked.